wow, wow. This video is finally, it's finally happening. After months and years and months and years and decades, and finally decided to do the sneaker collection video. And as you know, I've got more trainers than I have brain cells. So I don't know if I can fit all of them into one little episode. You may have to do a part two. But as promised, it's game time. Listen, as my subscribers know, I've probably got the best trainer collection in the UK, better than any whatever that fashionista you may want to call them, them fake fashionistas, better than any rapper, any probably even footballer. I've got the best trainer collection out here in the UK. And there's a reason I've been holding off because I've, I've got so many trainers. I've got a ton of trainers which are literally hidden gems that I haven't worn. Which I just keep to myself. And I feel like if I do a video, it'll probably be like eight hours. I'm just gonna, I might do a part two. I'm gonna keep it very limited for today to my favorite trainers in particular. But that's what you guys wanted. You've been asking for a long, long time. And I'm not. And who am I to really say no to that? So I'm not gonna do all the super talk right now. I'm just not gonna do all that. Let's let's just go into the trainers, and I want to find out which one is your favorite. All right, listen, you look. My number one trainer, and the, my most favorite trainer in this collection. And as you look, have seen, I've got my dirty beat up trainer version, which I wear of this trainer, and that's the Jordan 4 Off White Sale. This here is a pair never worn before, fresh out of the box. I've got my own one which I wear, but you know you've got to keep a second bad boy in the bag. And this trainer, I personally think it's the best trainer of 2020. No trainer goes anywhere near. There's no designer trainer, no Gucci fuck off stupid collaboration goes anywhere near this trainer. This trainer can wear just about probably any fit. Um, it retails at about 170 to 180. However, if you were to get that price for this trainer today, you must be related to Jesus Christ. This trainer right now, in this size as well, which is a UK seven, which is I like to wear. I'm usually an eight, but I like to wear a seven because I love my trainers tight and I love for the laces to be hanging. I don't like to tie my laces. So for a UK 7 now, for you to get this size is about 1,200 resale prices. It's in, if you want to get this for re, retail, forget about it. So this trainer right here is potentially the best and most favorite trainer in my collection. There's no doubt about it. There's no debate. There's no competition with this trainer. Virgil, you did very well. Very, very well. I applaud you for this trainer. And I don't see a trainer beating this until the Jordan 4 bread, off-white breads come out. So yeah, well done Virgil on these ones. There's no better trainer in my collection that I favor. Maybe apart from the um, off-white on cords, but still. Cool, another trainer in my collection. And I'll be real, I've never been a major, major fan of the fours, but in the last year or two, they've really just uh, absolutely Fresh, look at these sparkles. Jesus Christ, these are a UK eight. I'm typically a UK eight. Um, the sales we like to do for the style, but these are more of a casual day-to-day -day trainer, at least for me. Um, due to their size, retail 180, resale almost 270, 280, about 300, and they're they're not your most extravagant trainer they're not anything crazy that you probably haven't seen before but this is a trainer i really wear with my gray track suit it's just jordan 4 nowadays seem to be more of a statement piece than anything else because they've become so much harder to get a hold of and i know the average individual i'm not going to catch in this trainer and if i see you in this trainer i know you're a real sneakerhead just like myself um so yeah this is probably in my top 10 in the last six or 12 months of my trainer collection, Jordan 4 um, Fire Red, 100%. I'd recommend to get these if you're looking for a little casual trainer, nothing too crazy, even resale price is decent. 
the Jordan 4 fight, right? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Trainer number three is a trainer that I've had in the collection for such a long time, but just because it's almost like a holy grail of trainers, regardless of the value, I've literally just never put it on my feet. I've never removed the tags. I've just about taken out the box. And this trainer here is the Yeezy 350 black and red. Listen, this trainer here is a holy grail of the sneaker world. And re um, retail for Yeezy is about 120, 130. No, I was wrong, 170 for this trainer. However, to save it, obviously it's not all much of an investment. But just because of the sentimental value of being on the original Kanye trainer, to me, me being a big fan of Kanye as well, um, I just hold on to this trainer, you know what I'm saying? I never removed to the tags. It just means so much more to me than an Instagram picture. We've got another pair of trainers right here, which is a Jordan 1 Satin Redskin. These are, if I'm being extremely specific, a UK 7 which is a US 9.5 in women's and this is the biggest size you can get and and my favorite size in Jordan 1's even though I'm a size 8 typically a size 7 in Jordan 1's is my favorite because I don't like to tie the laces as you can see I like to keep them short and hanging like this just you know it gives it a bit of character I, listen, listen I like to crease my trainers I feel like it adds a different character to the trainer. I know a lot of people look at me like, David, are you, are you taking drugs? No, I like to crease my Jordan 1s because the difference between Jordan 1 highs and Jordan 1 mids, very big difference in material. Two, two different, completely different levels of um, leather, which allows you to crease them and still allows them to train them to give them the personality and for them to still look good. When you crease a mid, it's like an Air Force One, it's finished. That that quality of leather is very poor. You can't allow yourself to get away with creasing with a mid. You've got to walk like a penguin. These, I can I can do 12 backflips, a basketball game and a football game, and they'll still look pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Look what I'm doing right now. Um, these um, retail as a typical Jordan 1 for about 170. Resell isn't too crazy at the moment. I think it's about three to 400 pound. Nothing too crazy. I know maybe the average individual may think it's crazy, but if you're a sneakerhead, a trainer like this, you should slap this in your inventory. But if you go anything past the UK 7 slash US 9.5, I'm very sorry, you will not be able to add this trainer to your collection. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, what, what I'm about to pull out is one of the most popular trainers of 2020. And I'll be very deadly honest with you, I've, I've got quite mixed emotions about this trainer even though I do own it, because how can I not buy it? Which is Jordan 1 Mochas, and the reason why my emotions are quite mixed about this is because I've, I've had like two, three pairs of the Jordan 1 Travis Scotts, and more or less, this is the exact same trainer, just you don't have the reversible tick. And once you have the Travis Scotts, it's very difficult to be excited by this. You know what I'm saying? The resale value on this sits about four or five hundred pounds and it's impossible right now to get it for retail value. But it is a beautiful trainer. That's something I can't deny, but once you've had, for my real, real sneakerheads out there, my little 10%, 1% of sneakerhead individuals that managed to get their hands on the Travis Scott, is, for me personally, it's very difficult for me to get excited about this colorway because the only thought that comes into my mind is the Travis Scott collaboration and I've already had it. And you with, you can't get better than that Jordan 1 collaboration, at least in this colorway. So it's very difficult for me to almost emotionally invest in this trainer. And even though I have it, it'll probably be a trainer that I'll sell. Um, I might find a fit for it. I have plenty of fits for it right now, but I can't really um, put my heart into this trainer. Bear in mind, I've already got the Travis Scotts. Um, but I'll be honest, it is a beautiful trainer. And if you don't have the Travis Scotts and you don't want to pay a thousand pounds for Travis Scotts, but you're still a 
Respectable sneakerhead, I'd recommend definitely get this trainer. Bearing in mind we're quite late into the video, this pair of trainers I'd like to say is, if I'm being honest, far from my favourite, and that is the Jordan 1 OG Lucky Greens. The only thing that made me get a hold of these trainers is because, for whatever reason, once upon a time, I was a fan of the Boston Celtics. Bearing in mind, I'm, Jordan, I'm Michael Jordan's biggest fan. I just like the aesthetic of the Jordan Celtics, you know what I'm saying? Jordan, because of the fashion Jordan guy, I was, I, was, nice. I was all about the Boston Celtics aesthetic, the little leprechaun, all of that. But these are fucking shit. These are fucking shit. Those are beautiful, bro. You shut your fucking mouth, yeah. You're know. fat, Dennis. You know. Yeah, thank you. These, okay. this colorway makes very little sense in terms of this little red edition. It just simply shouldn't be there. Um, I actually, and I'm sorry for saying this, I'm very embarrassed and ashamed to say this, but I owned a pair of mids, exact same colorway. In fact, it had very similar quality leather. So when I look at this trainer, bearing in mind the trainer had was a mid, and when I look at the quality of leather being very similar, it makes me so hard makes it so hard for me to put on this trainer. I'm gonna give it to whatever scumbag wants to wear this stupid trainer. Probably the scumbag's gonna be me, I'm gonna wear it. But right now, it's been out, I've had this, I've had my hands on this trainer for a month, two, three, and I honestly cannot bring myself to consider it. But it is still a part of my collection. I might still probably slap it on, but for right now, it's gonna sit in the back of the closet. It re um, retail, as always, Jordan 1, 170. It's, co it's currently reselling for about 250, 300. The most reliable seller right now is, the, I'm gonna leave my plug, which is a lay stock. Um, if not lay stock, I'll go StockX or someone else that you'll probably see on my IG, but there's about only three or four people Three, max I think five people that I'll actively go buy trainers from. For my sneakerheads, I need to make a very clear message to you. For example, lay stop. I bell my man at 4 or 5 p.m. I need this pair of trainers as soon as possible. By 8, 9 p.m., maybe 10, you'll shout me, bro, send your postcode, I got the trainers. If you're shouting a plug for a pair of trainers and he's telling you, yeah, I'll, I've, I've got that order for you, give me two weeks. Those trainers are fake. That's what, those trainers are fake. There's no reason to why he's ordered them and they take it two weeks. Because they're coming from China, they're coming from, from Mr. Whoever. He's made them in his house. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just get your trainers checked, yeah. That's all I can say to you. Jordan Blue Moons, wow. And these trainers, wow. The lever on these trainers, wow. And I got these trainers literally about two, three months ago. I still haven't worn them, because they're so beautiful. And they're so simple that I don't know what to do with them. What? You know what I'm saying? As you lot know, I like my extravagant outfits. I like my crazy little fits. And I don't know if I should put them on my feet. I don't know if they're just, I don't know if they're me. I don't know if I deserve them. Their simplicity is exquisite, you know what I'm saying? The colorway, um, the quality of leather is ridiculous. You already get little scratches in them, as you can see. When you buy a, when you get a Jordan 1 high OG, look at the leather, that's what you get. Compared to when you get a mid, it looks like a pair of Air Force Ones, the stiff, fake leather. But that's what you pay for. When you get a pair of OGs, you get what you pay for, a quality pair of trainers. And this is, a, despite me not ever wearing them, they're a key part of the twin, the Eva Bumi 2021 trainer collection. And I hope I can, I really hope one day I can, you know, add these to the trainer collection. Um, in terms of fits, they're already here, but what fit can I make with them? Do I deserve to wear them? Are they David Bummy? But because you know, when you're not trainers, you just, you just gotta get out. Oh, 
My personal favorite day to day kicks, no drip, just David B just chilling, you know, with maybe the, the mom. You know what I'm saying, going as the shopping and all that. If you're a shoe fanatic as myself or jo Jordan, any sort of trainer collector, you know that the Balenciaga track crannons in terms of comfort, quality, value. If you're a shoe fanatic as myself, you will know that the Balenciaga track one are ones, not the track, not the new one, not the track twos, the track ones are potentially one of the best, they've been the, one of the best shoes in the market in terms of quality, durability, you know, any category. They are one of the best trainers in work in value. I've had plenty of design trainers. They are fucking shit. Gucci trainers, shit. All them other design trainers, fucking shit. Valenciaga trainers, I wear them in the rain, in the snow, in the sand, they're still here. No rips, no tears. If I clean them, they go back to their freshest. They're really Balenciaga. These Balenciaga trainers here are probably the only trainers really worth their coins. I'm gonna be honest. I don't care what you think. These trainers are probably the only trainers worth their coins. Um, so if you want a pair of trainers you can wear every day for a fucking year, or two or three, get this all black pair of Balenciaga track ones. These two trainers both now. Re they used to be 600, which is what I paid for them. Now they retail at 695 of the new season. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do, but they really are worth their money. And anyone that hasn't got a pair yet wants to design a trainer, this is the this is the only designer trainer I probably ever recommend to. Let me just before we go into the last trainer, we've got to talk to my favorite trainer. I wanted to leave my favorite trainer as the last trainer. Well, the last trainer is the best trainer, but it's not, I know it's in my heart, my favorite trainer is not the best trainer, but the best trainer, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't even know what I'm saying, but my favorite trainer, potentially, and my favorite Jordan 1 is the Jordan 1 Rookie of the Year. Primarily because the quality of the leather is absolutely ridiculous. If you're on my Insta story, you saw me doing all this. You saw me doing all that, you know what I'm saying? Certain niggas that own only mids, they see me doing that, they're having a heart attack, they know the trainers finish. No, that's not happens with the Jordan 1 rookie of the year. This is one of the best levels you can get on the market. I'm being dead serious. But then you've got these flaps here, and they've got famous Michael Jordan quotes on the sides. And as everyone knows, Michael Jordan is my favorite athlete, sportsman, personality in the world. You've got the quotes on the sides, in between the straps on both trainers of the circuit of the year and you've got these typically you don't you don't you don't really have that on, on a normal Jordan ones when you've got these so that's what really differentiates this and the light cream colour is so simple but it really does it and it's got it's got it here too on the other trainer too on the right Jordan one and I honestly, I, I don't think I can put into words how much I love this trainer here. I know it may seem like a bully, this trainer, but I don't think there's many Jordan 1 trainers with the quality of leather, despite the quality of a Jordan 1 high already, with the quality of this trainer here, leather. I know, I know they put a special little magic touch on the leather on the Jordan 1 over the year, because this trainer to, to, to an average sneakerhead means way more. Um, it retails about six, like average, any retail Jordan 1 is about 170. This trainer, however, it's impossible to get for retail right now, ever, probably till you die. It resells for six to 700 pound. And if you're a real sneakerhead, if you really love Michael Jordan like I do, I'd re really recommend get this shoe. This here is a UK size seven. As you can see by the laces, as I said previously, I don't like to tie my laces, I like them hand loose, I like my train to be really loose. These shoes here are the holy grail of the Air Force One world. There's not a better one. This is these this beats the Jordan, not the Jordan, the Air Force One skeleton, which was the initial trainer that didn't crease. But these trainers here, bad boy. Let me put these back on my feet. Because listen, Virgil, you fucking bad boy. Drop me a DM man. It's about time. It's about time, don't you think? It's really about time. 
This is my slimes. If I'm being deadly honest, this isn't even half of the trainer collection. But I feel like I'm not I'm not gonna go it. I'm, I'm not gonna make up two hour video, you know what I'm saying? If you want a part two, please let it be known to me. Drop a little cheeky little like, maybe a comment. Tell your nan to watch my drip. Tell your mum to check out the crep. And once again, my slimes, he's my drip stars, my drip heads. I do apologize for being inactive last week and I will make up this week with two videos and I really want to do a part two. This is a trainer collection video because this is nowhere near the whole collection. So, I'll let you look decide. I'll see you lot next week.